Hello and welcome inside the WOSN studios alongside Mark Shine. I'm Matt Finkel. Mark, it's another Tuesday. It's a Tuesday yep. that the Lima community, the Lima basketball community has been looking forward to for quite some time and that's because it's Lima Cup Tuesday. Lima Central Catholic taking on Lima Senior, both undefeated. I'll just start with who you got. Let's break it down. I mean, this is, well, this is the game. You know, I think the easy thing to do is you look, just look at individual personnel. The Spartans probably have a little bit overall talent. If you're looking at one down through eight or nine, but the quality of competition for both teams has been so good. They're so experienced. That's a hard thing to look at. So let's look at the three things that coaches look at, and that's the three Fs, fouls, fatigue, and the flu. Okay, who gets in foul trouble if anybody serious, like Trey Cobbs in the first half, or you know Walton gets one in the early in the third quarter, and now he's got four. Those types of situations play in. Uh, how about if somebody gets, you know, fatigue sets in because you're gonna have a lot of adrenaline and emotion flying early. Who recovers from that, gets back on the floor, and maybe that deep line of senior bench plays in. And then we just call it the flu, as in who has a minor injury, who's not quite up to par this evening. I think the Spartans are a little bit better, but remember, I'm a Spartan graduate, so I gotta go that yeah, way. A little anyway. bit biased, I guess, in I that am. regard, but We've got to watch both of these teams a bunch so far this season. LCC coming off wins over Chaminade Julian last Tuesday, Bath on Saturday. For Lima Senior, they just defeated St. John's on Friday and put themselves pretty much in the driver's seat for the track. They both were tested last week, and we talked about that, how they were going to be tested right. coming into this matchup, and they all passed. So where does this leave us? Well, I think if you just look at the track, I think the Spartans are certainly in, in line to track. They've got no losses. Everybody else has at least two. They have some difficult games coming up, but they're in the driver's seat in the track. And, of course, LCC are not playing in a conference. They just go out and find the best people they can find to play. If I'm Lima Senior, I'm curious about whether Marquavius Wilson's back in the lineup or not. And also, Xavier Simpson's not shot the ball well lately. His last three games, he's only made one three-point field goal. That would be a bit of a concern. That's why we tee it up and go play. Dantes Walton went over 1,000 career points on Saturday. Congrats to him. Whoever wins this game will probably, of course, be happy that they have their undefeated season still right. intact. My point was whoever loses, this is not going to matter. Right. I expect to see both of these teams at state in Columbus or at least at regional. But this is, this is what it's all about for Lima basketball, and, and it's going to be a great showcase. Well, it really a showcase is. showcase that you can see on WOSN Live at 7.30. We hope you'll tune in. And, then, of course, it's great preparation for the tournament because you're going to be in a great tournament-like atmosphere. You're playing quality competition. It's a great preparation for that. So looking forward to that. And if you miss it live at 7.30 on WOSN, we'll rebroadcast at 10 p.m on WTLW. Moving on now to the NWC with our third unbeaten, Lincoln View, yep. and they're still unbeaten, 16-0. They beat Crestview 60-48 on Friday, and then Parkway 53-28 on Saturday. Still haven't really been tested. That Crestview game, we talked about the Knights were playing well, but Lincoln View got the W pretty easily. A couple of Ws been playing great defense. They're giving up just 48 to Crestview, 28 to Parkway, so their defense has been outstanding. Talked to some NWC people this weekend. You know, Dan Haggerty passed away. The former Grizzly Adams and Chandler Adams has that big beard now, and he's now become Grizzly Adams in the Northwest That's a Conference. fitting nickname. I kind of like that one. If I'm a post player and they're calling me Grizzly, I'm happy. Yeah, got to be. So yeah. Lincoln View is still a huge story in the NWC. There are two one-loss teams in the conference. Spencerville's 12-2 overall, 4-1 in the NWC. Delphus Jefferson's 11-4, and 3-1. And, and the Bearcats beat Bluffton 65-59 in overtime on Friday night. Yeah, they did. And, you know, obviously Dakota Pritchard's had a great season for Spencerville. His low game in the season is nine. He just missed being in double figures by a single point. He's been in double figures every other game. And of course, they've been solid defensively. We've kind of forgotten about them because they have a couple of early losses, but they're hanging right there in the conference yeah, race. Yeah, they've won six straight. They also beat Delta St. John's on Saturday. And Jefferson didn't have a league game this past right. week, but they did beat Pandora Gilboa pretty easily. The next big one in the NWC is Lincoln View Jefferson. And, and kind of we're getting down to the last chance now. You know, Matt, when we first started doing this, we talked about the fact that every week there was going to be a big game in the conference and we could well end up with two or three teams tied for it. But along the way, Lincoln View just continues to knock off opponents who have challenged them. And this week now it's Jefferson. Tough weekend for, Salon, uh, for Crestview, rather. 10-5, and 2-2 yep. two and two now in the NWC. They lost to Lincoln View and then lost to Salina. Had trouble scoring this weekend. Didn't put many points on the board in either game. So they, you know, obviously the problem's there. But they still played well defensively and seem to kind of get back on track offensively. But got a couple losses now in the conference. So Lincoln View, the unanimous number one in Division yep. Four. They're in the driver's seat for the NWC. But a couple more challenges and some tests left in the league. We'll see how they end up. WBL now. Big one in the WBL was Defiance OG. You called it. I did. And Defiance, they look good, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you could shoehorn somebody else in the gym. I'm not sure where we would have put them at, but the crowd was outstanding, <laughs> and, and it was a great atmosphere to play in. But 
defiance goes up, you know, Cam Singleton doesn't play. He's got a shoulder injury, and they still come out and played extremely well. They defended, and they shot the ball extremely well, 13 out of 20 from the three-point line. Every time OG makes a run, somebody splashes a three. It was a great environment, but certainly the defiance kids really rose to the challenge. Defiance had a great game both in their half-court offense yes. and then running the floor. Why don't you show us how? Start with the half-court offense well, for let, let the us, Bulldogs. Let's start. Well, first of all, it's the very first possession of the basketball game we're going to see right here. Um, Schmidt is right down here in the low box, right here, and he's going to make this wonderful drop step move and a step through. That was a really well done play by Schmidt. They singled the floor out for him and got him that particular shot. And then here's a great play that Frederick gets one going to the basket. And if you think about what he does here in this particular sequence, he has, first of all, he's averaging just four and a half points a game. He gets 20 in this one. Here he is on this side. And he's going to come off this screen and curl and go all the way to the basket. There's two screens set for him. They say, well, why are they, is the guy following him around? Because he's such a great three-point shooter. If you don't, he steps back over here and they get the lob pass to him. But here he comes on the curl cut. Menendez with the nice bounce pass and layup. That is his only two-point field goal. He has 20 points. Well, figured out. He splashes six three-point field goals. And when you talk about attacking, attacking the press, you want to get the ball to the center. Here it gets to the center. Here's Frederick in the corner for three. That's done off a pass into the free throw line area. Our next one, though, you attack the press. This time it's dribble penetration to the free throw line area. Here's that same spot, three ball from the corner. And he had six of those. I think they're all three or corner jump shots from one corner or the other. Here again, here's the, the attack the press type thing. We're going to penetrate dribble to the middle of the floor. And when we get it right here, it's a nice spin dribble. And when we get it here, Defense has to stop the penetration dribble. Here's the three out of the corner. Feet set, perfect form. And he nailed six of those and win the basketball game. Yeah, very good win for Defiance. They're now 13-3 and three overall. They're the only unbeaten left in the Western Buckeye League at 5-0. and oh. OG did rebound. They yep. beat Grove on Saturday. Shawnee, Wapak, Bath, and Elida, all three and two in the league. They really are. And, you know, I started looking at some of those teams. We've talked about Shawnee a lot frequently. So I really looked at Bath and Elida. You look at what the Wildcats have left on their schedule. They have Shawnee this week, but then they also have Kenton and Elida and Van Wert. Actually, they have Van Wert this week and then Shawnee, Kenton, and Elida. They could well end up seven and two in the conference with losses by three to OG and four to Defiance and go, man, we were that close this year. Yeah. Because the Bath's really playing well. It's right interesting, now. yeah, that you said that because we said a couple weeks ago Bath was due for a big conference right. win, right? They're playing everybody too close, and if they end up seven and two with just losses oh. to OG and Defiance, it'll really prove how good they were all along. Admittedly, there are challenges left. They're going on the road to Elida. They're going on the road to Shawnee, but it could happen. That, that's kind of an interesting scenario. Whereas Elida, they've also played well. They, they won three games in a row before losing to Toledo Central Catholic. Unruh's been just incredibly hot for them. He's made 18 three-point field goals over the last four games. He's really playing well, and of course they get scoring out of press as well. So Elida's coming around too. All right, looking forward to see how the Western Buckeye League plays out, but Defiance, the big winner on Friday night there in the driver's seat. It's their league to lose. Yep. In the MAC, Battle of Unbeatens, Coldwater Fort Recovery, we talked about it. Cavs get the five-point win in what turned into a very high-scoring affair, which I don't know that we saw coming. I, I didn't think it would be a shootout and that Coldwater would win. I thought if it was a shootout, it would favor Fort Recovery. Ten players, five on each team in double figures in that game. It's an 85-80 Coldwater win. How about an offensive game as opposed to all the defensive things we seem to have so often going on right now? But Coldwater playing very well. Seven wins in a row for them. They're in the driver's seat. I thought that, that the winner of the Fort Recovery and Versailles game was going to be the MAC champion. Yeah. Coldwater's gotten themselves in that position now, but they do have to go and play a Versailles at home this week. Coldwater's 4-0 in the MAC. Fort Recovery falls to 2-1. Versailles beat Marion Local 64-51, yep. then lost to Rushi on Saturday. Versailles, tough couple weekends for them, just good opponents, and yep. that, that'll continue this week against Coldwater. Meanwhile, St. Henry, Minster, and Marion, as I just mentioned, all 3-2 and two in the conference. So just like the WBO where we had a handful of teams Two games back, same thing here in the MAC. Same thing here. Of course, the big game is that Fort Recovery Coldwater game this weekend to see if somebody can knock off Coldwater because they're starting to run out of chances. Somebody's got to get them before long, or the Cavs are going to win the championship. Could happen this week. So Henry's won five games in a row, but they have two league losses, so that's a problem for them. All right, let's go on to the BBC now, Mark. Arlington and Liberty Benton, yep. and this shook up the entire league because, remember, Liberty Benton unbeaten. They had knocked off Van Buren, and Van Buren, that's still their only loss right. to this point. Arlington goes and beats Liberty Benton 55-48, so the league is completely now back up for grabs. Three teams on top. Lipsick is, is, has, just has one loss, so does Liberty Benton, so does Van Buren, so that conference is going to be spread out through the rest of the season. 
A lot of big games left to play in there. Arlington certainly with a nice win over Liberty Benton. That was one I didn't see coming. Arlington's had some trouble scoring points this year, but they got enough to win against Liberty Benton this time. Lipsick got that big win over Van Lu. They've won four in a row. And then you said it, Lipsick, LB, Van Buren, all six and one. You got a prediction coming out of here. You got to still like Van Buren if their only loss is to yeah. Liberty Benton, right? That, and I like Van Buren because they can score. And they've just been up and down the floor. They get a lot of points. They have just that one loss. That was a three-pointer in overtime to Liberty Benton. I, I do like Van Buren's chances. Lipsick, I think, is going to have a little bit of a problem in the fact that they're trying to win two conferences. They're still in the running in the PCL as well. So that's kind of a distraction for them in that loss by Liberty Benton last week and just kind of threw things up in the air. I like Van Buren. All right, we will see how that one plays out as well. And, you know, just a couple weeks away from the tournament draw, and yes, we are. we're going to have some big league games coming up. The NWCC, though, pretty much settled at this point as Perry has separated itself from the pack. 13-2 and two overall, 5-0 and oh now after a 40-point win over Hard Northern. They've won six in a row. Yeah, and they'd have to lose their last two conference games. One of them is Temple Christian at Temple, but chances are Perry's going to run the table. We'll certainly be have just one league loss. Other than that, Somebody have to beat them twice. They have to lose twice for them to tie for the league championship. Playing well, as you mentioned before. Right. There is a, a big pack at 3-2 and yep. two with USV Temple, Riverside, and Waynesfield Goshen. But like we've talked about, this is the one league where I think we might have got it right from the right. beginning. Like, yeah. you know, we, everything gets a back up for grabs. We kind of knew Perry was good. It'd be their league to lose, and now they're really in the driver's seat. How about this too, Matt? Let's put them in, in championship run next year at, in, in the 16-17 year because they got four of those starters back. Yeah, they're, they're going to be good yeah. for, for next. They were great last year. They're right. definitely good this year. And you like where they're headed next year because all, these kids are juniors. So yeah, it's, it's they're pretty all, exciting. They're four top players are juniors. And they've got a lot of role players in there as well. They're doing their jobs for Coach Tabor, but they're, they're going to be very good again next year. Yeah, Coach Tabor's done a great job yeah. over there. All right, you talked about it a minute ago, the PCL. Lipsick over Collida, 59-57. Now the Wildcats aren't unbeaten in the league anymore either, and this league is kind of back up for grabs. Collida's 3-1, and one, Grove's 3-1, and one, um, North City's 3-1. and one. Lipsick's hanging in there with two losses, but they're hanging right in there, and with the way things are going, that could end up with a three or four team tie with a couple of losses. It's a very balanced conference this year. Yeah, you said Lipsick's in there at 3-2. and yep. two. Continental's also alive. Yep. They only have one league loss. Right. They're 2-1 in the league. Miller City plays Kaleida on February 5th and Grove on February 13th. Those two games will go a long way to deciding this league. But how about Columbus Grove in the NWC and, of course, in the PCL, yep. fighting for a PCL league title. And then you, you look where they are on the NWC standings. They're like sixth or seventh. It just yep. goes to show you not the discrepancy in the leagues, but playing in two leagues is so difficult because you have to have that – energy every night. Every night. And I think that's one reason that they lost to Kaleida. They had played Lincoln View the night before. You could just tell they were yeah. a step slow. They just didn't have uh, – that effort was there, but it wasn't just the play as crisply as they typically do. It cost them a game and might have cost them a chance to win the conference outright. Let's talk about the Shelby County mm -hmm. League now and Drew Sosby, a milestone night for wow. him. Jackson Center goes over 1,000 career points. You called the Jackson Center New Bremen game on Saturday with the uh, Tigers getting the win. Well, I think, first of all, you, you start with Sosby. He can pass the basketball. He's a solid defender. He's just a very good basketball player. You mentioned he went over 1,000 points in the game. Wildermuth then can go down inside the 6'6 young man. He can control the paint area. He's also stepped out and made some three-point field goals on the season as well. So they've got a good big kid, a good perimeter player. They've got a lot of good role players that fit in around them. If you play for Coach Elkert, you're going to play defense. They're always solid in that particular area. Big games left for them. That they have to play Rushi and Anna yet, but they do have a one league game lead in the conference. That's right. They're eight and one in the conference. Rushi and Anna are both seven and two, but we, they play each other twice. So some big games coming up down the stretch there. In the GMC Green Meadows Conference, I was up in Ayersville this Friday for a big game between Ayersville and Wayne Trace. Wayne Trace was leading the league coming in. Mm -hmm. And when I'm there, it's 15 nothing Raiders. They jump out to a 15 nothing lead. They lead 17 three after one. But then Ayersville plays a great three quarters and gets the victory. They win by 14. Yeah. You know, they're you, down you 15 like, to nothing. And I saw that final. I was like, that's got to be a mistake. Yeah. But no, I get credit to Ayersville. Yeah, you look at their Twitter account and say, hey, Ryan Shadowald, you got this one right or not? <laughs> yeah, what's the and deal? Ryan always has it right, yeah. and he did. So that, that was a surprise to come back. They really boxed and won. Ethan Winder, he's the main scoring threat. I think he had six or eight points when I was just there in the first quarter. So I left that game thinking to myself, Wayne Trace is going to be a tough out in the tournament. And I still believe that because right. I liked what they did in that first quarter. But Ayersville, who's now moved up to second in D4, they could be a team to watch as we go on. And we'll see how that league plays out because now it's, there's still a lot left to be decided. 
All right, special mention, girls time now in, yep. in Lima, a couple more milestones. Madison Stolle became the all-time leading scorer on Saturday. Congrats to her and a win over Shawnee. She did it at the free throw line, scoring 27. She needed 27, right. she scored more than that and, and became the school's all-time leading scorer. And how about Rion Thompson passing India Benjamin to become Lima Senior's all-time leading scorer? You know, a week ago Sunday, 10 days ago, I'm at the Lima YMCA, it's noon. I look down the gym floor, Madison Stolle is working on her game all by herself. They had played Saturday afternoon. There she is on Sunday afternoon working on her game all by herself at the Lima YMCA. You want to know why she's a career scoring leader? There you go. It's no fluke that either yeah, of those right. two girls are now the leading scorers in LCC and Lima Senior, respectively. All right, Mark, let's take a look at what games yep. we've got coming up. It's, of course, highlighted by the LCC Lima Senior game tonight, Tuesday, live on WOSN 730, replayed on WTLW 10 p.m. Then we've got Wednesday, Otterbein versus ONU Men Live. Wednesday, 9.30 p.m., Fort Warmie and Rushi Girls. Friday, 10.30, Lincoln View, Delphus Jefferson, that big one in the NWC. And then Friday, 10.44 on WTLW after the sports report, Shawnee and Elida square off. Good one in the Western <coughs> Buckeye League. Saturday, busy day as always, John Carroll versus the Ohio Northern Men Live at 3 p.m. Then versus Sales, Coldwater Boys, 7 p.m. and a Fort Warmy Boys 8:30. Good one in the MAC, followed right up by a good one in the Shelby County. 10:30 Fort Jennings versus Allen East Boys. Sunday at five, it's the Cold Water Swimming Invite from Jay County High School. Andy Lynch will be on the call. Looking forward to that. Sunday at seven, Kenton and USV Boys. Sunday at 8:30, Van Buren versus Bluffton Boys. You can always visit the website WOSN.TV for the full schedule, including all the replay times. Thanks so much, Mark. Looking forward to coming right back here next week to break it all down.